Hello and welcome to another Fortnite on the Isle, my bi-weekly update series where today I don't really have a whole lot of stuff to recount at the beginning of the video because, well, I'm recording this on a Thursday, a day or two earlier than when I normally would record it because today, the day that I'm recording, is the 4th of July. Happy Independence Day to all you American folk. In addition to that, there is also family coming for family reunion, so I'm recording this early to be able to get it out before any of that stuff goes down. All of the crazy life events for this fortnight are happening after the time of this recording, aside from me picking up and dropping, well, dropping off and then picking up my Ashes of Man poster that a friend gifted to me. You can see it right there. So that's cool. Anyways, back to the normal screen for this video. My reading this week has been great. I don't really remember how great my reading was last week, but overall this Fortnite has had a great reading time because, well, there's plenty for me to talk about. So let's just go ahead and talk about it. The bi-weekly reading. I was about to switch to a different screen without uh, any reason at all. Uh, the main thing is that, yes, I am continuing Infinite Jest. I have read 26 out of the 28 chapters so my goal over the next couple of months is to read each one of those last couple chapters because those last two chapters make up like an entire third of the book uh the reading over june that i did of infinite jest wasn't fantastic it wasn't my favorite i wasn't super into it overall but you know it it was what it was all things considered but the main thing is there are three books that i finished or read over the course of the last fortnight the first one of those being finishing the terminal man by michael Crichton. a uh, good book not amazing i think the main thing that holds it back is there wasn't quite enough of it on the page there were a lot of scenes like little time skips that happened that i think could have had expanded character work and other stuff like that going on that would have made the book a little bit better so not a bad book uh but not my favorite book either it wasn't as good as the andromeda strain Next up, I did finish this audiobook of Star Wars Light of the Jedi, the first book in the main High Republic series for the new Star Wars canon. Uh, the fact that it is a modern canon is not my favorite thing in the world, and it did explore some things with the Jedi and the Force that I'm not sure how much I liked, and I'm not sure how consistent they are with what would typically be considered canon, but I did enjoy the book overall. I will be continuing with that series probably with the second book in August, if I'm taking a guess right, because that's when the friends who I read that first book with uh, are going to be getting to it is probably in August. So I enjoyed it enough for what it was. If you want more information on any of these books that I read over the end of June, because all that stuff I did over the end of June, you can get more info on that in the uh, reading wrap up in TBR that I released last Tuesday and on my reading of Infinite Jest if you happen to have read the book or don't care about spoilers I recount uh, my exploration with the reading that I did over the last month in last Thursday's Infinite Jest diary video so there's that for people who are interested otherwise I grabbed the totally wrong book of this because they look very very similar I'm holding up Stella Maris by Cormac McCarthy but the book that I actually read over this week over just the last four days actually I started on the first and I finished today as of recording was The Passenger by Cormac McCarthy so the pair that goes with Stella Maris but again I grabbed the wrong book because I had the wrong one on my desk when I was uh, getting ready to record this video The Passenger was great it is my first five star McCarthy so for people who have followed along with any of my reading journey, especially as far as McCarthy is concerned, you know that I really disliked the road and then everything after that has been really hit or miss. There have been a couple that I've really liked, a couple that I really haven't liked. The Passenger might be my favorite one. If not, it's definitely up there alongside No Country for Old Men. I like it better than The Crossing, so at least it's a top two. But uh, I think I'm going to reread No Country for Old Men at the end of this McCarthy journey of mine. I'm still planning to do that reread. And when I do, I'll be able to determine what my favorite McCarthy book is. If nothing else, it has me very excited to read Stella Maris as the pair tie-in novel because, wow, The Passenger was just so, so good. I'm going to start writing my review of that next week. So at the time that you're watching this, probably starting tomorrow, will be approximately the time that I start putting together and writing my review for The Passenger. That's also when I'm going to start reading. Stella Maris, so having those two together will probably influence my review writing. There's the chance that I might not even write all of my review for The Passenger and finalize it until after I 
read Stella Maris and have that to review at the same time because uh, they're going to tie in, I think, in ways that will be really interesting and good to know for the purpose of reviewing. But either way, let's move on to the last item on the list, and that is I started The Blood of Olympus, and not only did I start it, I got most of the way through. I'm around 300 pages in at the time of this recording. At the time that this video comes out, I hope to actually be done with it, and that shouldn't be very hard at all to really come up with. I don't think I'm going to read very much Infinite Jest this weekend, if any at all, because of the family reunion. So The Blood of Olympus is going to be my main book, and I doubt that I'm going to need more than one or two days to, or one or two mornings to finish that. So that that's what things look like at the moment. At the time of this video's release, like I said, I might just be finished with it, so I'm going to consider it as finished. But as of the first 300 pages that I've read at the time of recording, it's great, and it might be my favorite of the series so far, which is kind of a surprise to me. With all that being said, let's move on to the bi-weekly writing, which has also gone pretty well over the last couple of weeks. Uh, I got 2,000 words written for The Reign of Ash over this fortnight. Very close to done with this first set of outlines. This third outline in this first trilogy is very close to done. Only six uh, scenes left, most of those pretty short. And then basically the rest of July is going to fix be dedicated to fixing the dates for this third book to actually get the timeline correct and then once i'm done with that it's moving on to writing the next couple series worth of outlines for the rest of the year so i'm very excited to be close to done with this outline and i'm also pretty happy with how this editing has gone the last month over the course of june really because i got through a tough section that i thought that i was going to have to rewrite entirely after finishing the original writing of this outline and uh it turned out i didn't need to do that i just needed to make what was there better and include a couple extra things that weren't initially included expand a couple of the big climactic scenes because it was the climax that i was worried about and it turned out that it was going to be perfectly fine i just needed to expand it and actually have some more stuff in there that needed to be in there so i'm excited for that i did get 2300 words for reviews written on goodreads uh those being for the terminal man and light of the jedi so if you're interested in checking those out you can so 2300 reviews between the, or words between them i think 1000 for terminal man 1200 or so for light of the jedi approximately uh and then the passenger review like i said i haven't even started writing that yet i'm ruminating on it for the moment i'm going to rum ruminate for the next couple days maybe get a review structured because i think this one's going to be a little bit deeper than most of my recent reviews have been it might be on the level of the crossing or maybe even uh, deeper than my review of the crossing if that says anything because that's one of the reviews i'm most proud of then i also got an extra 1500 words written for blogs no new blogs for this one last time i talked about being most of the way done with a 21 pilots discography ranking uh being around 4000 or almost 4000 words written on it that review or ranking rather ended up at 4700 words when i finished it about a week ago week and a half ago or something like that but then i revised it and it is now about 52 5300 words so i added like 600 or so words to it which combined with you know the additional almost thousand words that i added to it to finish it in the first place you know i end up with a 1500 more words written over the last couple weeks so i don't know when that video is going to come out on account of the reunion and stuff and uh not being able to have time to actually get videos done that's why i'm doing this early uh, i don't know when that video is going to come out but it's going to be this month for sure because it's done and it's ready as for the coming releases well there's a few things that i'm excited about but nothing too much too crazy going on on the channel i forgot to mention the last update that on the third that wednesday was going to be my july 2024 uh state of affairs video nothing too crazy on that front but that is probably one of my better quality state of affairs videos so i'm going to shout it out here otherwise for the next couple of weeks i have the normal five videos coming out on the channel on the 9th this Tuesday will be a review and ranking for the Vickery and Castine trilogy by Tim Powers. Uh, I'm just going to let that video talk for itself. I didn't love the trilogy, but I didn't hate it. So that was an interesting uh, topic to get into for that video. On this Thursday on the 11th will be my next book haul video. That will be the one encompassing quarter two of 2024. And that one's going to be way longer than it needs to be because of how many ebooks I bought. Getting a Kindle was a very bad idea on this front. 
Next Sunday on the 14th will be Dagon by HP Lovecraft is what I'm going to be covering on that for a one of the last episodes of that series. And then next Tuesday on the 16th will be uh, another top 10 ranking, but that one's going to be on more classics that I want to read. I did a top 10 classics I want to read a few months back earlier this year. This one's going to be uh, 10 more of those. And then next Thursday on the 18th, I'm very excited to announce will be my new spring reading diary number one. So yes, probably about a week from now or from the time that you're seeing this video, I'm going to be starting on new spring and going to be spending a few weeks with that and doing reading diaries on that just as I've done with the first five books in the series that I've read. That the first one will be coming out on the 18th, so I hope people are excited for that. On the second channel will be just the next couple videos. I believe the last two videos for the Remnant from the Ashes Let's Play, Patient 2923, the DLC of it. So episodes three and four of that DLC may... No, that's, that's correct. Those are the last two episodes of that series. And then starting in August will be something a little bit more exciting, which I'm going to begin working on this weekend at the time that you're watching it so that is something that i'm looking forward in entertainment talk i don't really have too much to talk about just saying that over the last couple of these uh updates i talked about how i was doing new game plus runs on prime uh to you know get more trophies and just to play the game again and how i wanted to do new game plus on pc i started that technically a couple weeks ago but uh, I think I'm just going to restart the game on PC if I decide to do that on New Game Plus. Because the pre-DLC build of the game itself meant that my character is kind of out of whack. And I'm not really a fan of that build. So I would probably just be into restarting the whole game and playing through. And then doing New Game Plus again just to get all those trophies on PC. Because I'm a crazy person. In the wake of not really finishing Prime on that front, I did start a replay of Carrion. Uh, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Carrion is an interesting game that I played on PC several years ago when I bought it first time. It was only about six hours to play through the whole game and then like another two hours to do the like little Christmas episode that exists in there. Uh, I stopped playing this replay that I started when I got stuck somewhere. Couldn't figure out where it was that I needed to go, so I'm going to get back to that soon. Uh, but since it's a short game, I wasn't too worried about you know continuing immediately after that so i'll continue soon but that's just how things play out there as for the music talk however there's basically nothing to shout out here because one nothing released last week and b because i'm recording this on thursday nothing came out this week either so you know that that's just kind of how things go sometimes like i say way too often in these videos but there were three singles that released that I do want to shout out. Memphis Mayfire released a single called Paralyzed, which is one of their best songs, to be honest. I really, really enjoyed listening to this one. Uh, much better than the other single they released this year. Might even be better than most of, if not any of the songs from their most recent album. So that's pretty encouraging. Within Ruins released a single called Castle in the Sky, which I thought was very interesting stylistically and structurally, so I'm excited to see what this band puts out for a new album, because their last album I thought was fine, but wasn't anything that I have ever felt like I wanted or needed to return to. I think that was called Black Heart or something like that, so I'm hoping that this new album is a little bit better as far as that goes. And then Swallow the Sun released a single called Innocence Was Long Forgotten, which was really good, um, being not like the biggest person in the mellow death i don't necessarily have the best experience or i don't have the most experience or the most knowledge with the genre but i thought this song was great albeit a little bit different from most of the mellow death that i have listened to so that was an interesting song but that is everything that i have to talk about for this video a shorter fortnight on the aisle probably because i'm not spending 15 millennia talking about music and just music but uh that's going to be the end of this video i hope everybody has slash had a great 4th of July uh, and that nobody lost their fingers or anything like that setting off fireworks or anything crazy I'll be back like I said on Tuesday with uh, that that trilogy review for Tim Powers and that Thursday for that book haul which will be pretty exciting albeit way too large but I'll be back in the next video because this video is done <laughs>